those are tiny. Definitely for a kid. Those are raccoon prints in asbestos on this ball return. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today, Sunny and I are inside of a combination theater and bowling alley. Super interesting place, a lot of stuff in here. So I think with that being said, I'm ready to take you guys right on around here and see what we can find. Okay guys, so this is the way in to the bowling alley. We're gonna make our way in there and get a better idea of exactly what is going on in here. But I am very excited because it does look absolutely beautiful. Poster's dated right around 2010, 2011, which is not far off from when this uh, place shut down. Oh, this shows all the bowling shoes people could buy, bowling products. So I guess it's a, probably like a big thing for people in bowling leagues. They all want their own stuff. I'm sure that that was something that you could do. You'd probably join a bowling, bowling league. So you could get everything, you know, customized colored bags, everything, you know, you know, it's your own stuff. Kind of cool. See all that being advertised here. I was just talking about joining bowling leagues and then you can see up there, join a league. And they have all the shoes actually right here too. Probably get a better look and I'll go over onto the other side afterwards. See all the stuff over here, gift cards, hours. They used to have uh, neon bowling on the weekend. This actually sounds really cool. Good book parties even more sign up now for fall leagues it's probably as big too if you you know wanted to join a league and just play more competitively you could do that here really cool stuff to see all this stuff up up here kind of fascinating actually seeing all these shoes and you know wondering when the last time people wore them was what the memories were for people here all those, those positive things that they reflect back on and now this place is just sitting here. Here's that door that leads to the back end of where all the shoes are. Oh, and you can see all the shoes down here. These are probably all the kids' sizes, super small. Pull one and hope that there's no spiders or anything in it. Yeah, those are tiny. Like for a kid. Let me look over here. Actually, this is the ones I was looking up at before with the sign. But now, do they more adult sizes? Eight, eight and a half, sixes. This is just so cool to see. <laughs> nice and big rental. Why do they always look like this? They always have like the. I'm not I'm not trying to knock the style, but they are a little ugly. They're always like really bold colors and just, I don't know. Maybe there's a certain reason why they have to be designed this way. But, you know, peak bowling performance. But really cool to see all these left. They don't always leave all this or sometimes they're just all tossed and trashed, but maybe they left it here thinking that they uh, would use this place again one day. still have like this paperwork left here, like these little documents they'd have to fill out. I was gonna try and read it a little bit, but it's like, yeah, I guess, yeah, for people who are trying to keep track, maybe before they had um, like computerized ways to keep track of the game, except it's like just numbers, like totals for the second first game. It doesn't really have it like play by play, so I'm not sure what the difference was here. I mean, this is for professional. Maybe they don't just do it by one game only, they play multiple games and then they go on the total based on multiple games. Yeah, I'm not really sure how this works, but it's cool to see that blank I guess even copies on the second paper for like someone else's record. It says captain's copy, so yeah, probably for um, professional, you know, the leaks if they were playing. Up here, I just noticed what looks like probably like a little disco light machine, which probably makes sense because I saw on the board that um, they did like a probably like a neon colored disco y type uh, bowling night, probably for the, the teenagers, high schoolers. They used to have something like that that I would go to, but it was actually a nice skating rink. Super fun, super cool. So, you know, it's just uh, sitting up here collecting dust. 
Here is the general bowling alley area. I'm gonna get more up close and give you guys a better look at everything in a second. It's definitely um, really cool looking in here. There's a lot to see. Um, a bit of decay as well. It's definitely really dusty in here. But um, really cool. So I think I'm just gonna get a little up closer to some of the ball returns and everything and show you guys some more of those details. Also, I just want to take a minute to really appreciate all of the beautiful details uh, in this bowling alley, even on the ceiling. That's why I always have to remind myself to look up. So here is um, one of those little setups and the ball return. So I guess I'll show this here really quick. Got some more bowling shoes. Because this is where you would sit and keep track of um, the score and everything. It's kind of a little confused at first on the setup, but it looks like there's like a projector maybe system set up where this would, you know, go over here and it would project the score onto the boards. Initially I thought it would have been like a computer or like a TV screen or something like that, but I think it was more of like a projector system. Also, on a complete side note, really pretty murals in here. This is like a very uh, unique, I guess, kind of theme, almost like an under the sea type bowling alley with all the blue hues, but I really like it. And um, here is the ball return. And this is something that's actually pretty unique to this location is that um, the balls you're gonna see are a lot smaller. And that's because the style of bowling here was different. It was candle pin bowling. So the balls would be smaller. And these are some of the pins, for example. You can see they're like kind of tall cylinder shaped like uh, candles. That was kind of the idea. So he was talking about it before and then we have no idea if maybe this would be harder. I'm not sure if people would be more challenged. I always struggle in bowling, so I don't think I would have done too great here. He actually whipped out some more. <laughs> Just struggle with the size of them, you know? Yeah. It's weird, I feel like this is like a circus thing. Like. Yeah. I feel like that was always a thing. Yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> But um, yeah, so you can kind of get an idea of what they all look like. We're actually gonna head down and show you guys some more of the details. And um, kind of like on the end of the, whatever these things are called, the lanes, I guess, and go down there. It is kind of sketchy. This place is very decrepit. You can actually see the ceiling is falling through. Interestingly enough, guys, I'm gonna take you guys up there later because up here is actually the theater section. Right through this roof, where this hole is right now, takes you right into the theater which is um, a really weird vibe to know that you're just like looking right up into another section. The people were like up there and now it's just like a giant hole in the roof or, you know, but. so weird stuff, but you will see that soon. But yeah, we're gonna head down here and uh, show you guys what it looks like. I just realized that those are raccoon prints in asbestos on this ball return. I just thought that was really funny. I figured I'd show you guys, but now I'm gonna head down to the end and show you guys what the end of the lane looks like. So we're making our way towards the end of lane eight. I'm gonna be super careful because you don't know with all of the potential damage that's occurred since this place. Ooh, I just heard a crunch. Sorry guys, I'm getting a little freaked out because this whole thing could just, like all of this could just cave down on me. Actually, funny enough, I'll show you guys. There is a plank of wood holding it all together for us right now, which is super sketchy. And I keep hearing creaking, which really freaks me out. So I'm gonna try and be quick here. You can see when I look down, there's still all of the pins all the way down at the end. I never got knocked down or sent down the return or whatever, however it works in the back to set the pins back up again. Super weird being back here. It always feels so weird standing in the lanes because you know you're not supposed to do that. Ugh. Okay guys, it keeps creaking. So I think with that, I should probably <laughs> not be back here. And there's a giant whale painted on there. I will say the little mural style is really pretty. I do like that. Okay, I'm gonna admire it from afar now. I'm gonna get away before this thing gives in because that is probably not the most secure thing in the world. Probably can't tell a lot from here, but it is super curved, this wood. You can see it's actually even lifting up and that's all usually water damage over time. Cause you know, these places are unmaintained, so anything is kind of you know, raining on here, whatever, water flowing in or 
after storms, if there's a leak, no one, no one patches it, no one makes sure it's okay. The temperature you know, changes, all of that affects the wood. So um, don't be surprised if, you know, things end up peeling up like this and getting wavy or, you know, you step on something and before you know it, you're falling through the floor. That's why you gotta be super careful, guys, on places like this, especially with a lot of wood flooring because um, really dangerous. It can be very, very risky. And ceilings too, you gotta make sure you're not gonna get uh, whacked in the face by um, falling ceiling tiles. Decided to come over and admire the mural on the other side of the bowling alley. I actually just realized too, they kind of painted in like those candle pin style um, bowling pins into the mural, which is kind of cool actually. I thought that these ones are actually like these little, I guess, fish? Fish sharks blobs. They look really cute. I'm actually surprised that the painting has kind of held up so well. It looks so vibrant still and absolutely beautiful. It's a shame that it had to go to waste. But these little guys are cute. Seems like they're having a good time. Alright guys, we just left that bowling alley section and this is the like neighboring bar. I'm assuming that some of this architecture here was probably corresponding to when the theater was built because I kind of pointed that out briefly when I kind of showed you guys that the roof was kind of caving in that ceiling in the bowling alley that connects to a pretty old theater from the 30s so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the other architecture that um, was put in this building you know in these rooms as well is at least semi original to that so I'm gonna look around here and see what's going on Kind of right on that note, I wonder if some of this was uh, part of the original architecture because it just looks, you know, so nice, so beautiful. Uh, and I and I wonder if it could have been part of it. I do know that at least in this location, some of the kind of like original, more ornate, detailed, you know, decor, like lights and things like that, a lot of stuff was left from when they originally built this place. So I wonder if maybe even something like this too was just kept in here, even if they kind of made some of the other sections a little bit more modern. So he was actually making a really good point that he was like trying to knock on it and kind of, you know, just feel it. And you know, stuff like from back in the day, I just feel like was built better. This just feels like it's really heavy duty stone. It's not it's cheapo yeah, stuff. It's, it's definitely from, this is definitely <laughs> yeah. like predates World War II. This is definitely like when they built the building, this was probably in here. Cause this wasn't always a bar. It is true, this, yeah. This changed, the, the, but the building didn't change. So I think this was here originally. So it's crazy to see this. Yeah, it's definitely like a museum, really. Definitely very heavy duty. You now, not your typical uh, metal fountain that you're gonna see today. All right, guys, I'm gonna tuck behind this bar. I just saw this, and it really stood out to me. Looks really cool, really pretty. Got multiple little things that you probably would be dispensing beer out of. Also, guys, we are fairly close to a road, so <laughs> yeah, you guys can probably hear the beeping of the truck, but we're good. Being discreet. But you got they got all the pictures still here. Or the pints pie classes, not really pictures. <laughs> but um really cool. Take the design. It's kind of a shame that this place shut down because it seems like it would have been a really cool place. I like the vibe a lot. We even got like all the little drink like things. A margarita. You put this on top of the cup. Or you anything. And you like strain it through. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's like a lot of drinks you probably could use if I'm sure margarita. I was a bartender, I know. An untrained. Bart untrained, I was, I lied. Okay, guys, I just made my way upstairs. As you can see, this is the theater that I was talking about before that um, is falling down and kind of collapsing into the bowling alley. This place has pretty much been closed since the 60s and I don't think has really any prospects for reuse just because it's, you know, just really completely falling apart. This is very old architecture. It's it's kind of hard to, to work with this and to kind of bring it up to code. But there's a lot of cool original features still here, you know, from the seats and the carpet. It's really cool. So he already made his way up a little bit. I'm gonna follow after him just because we're also gonna look for a few other cool things like Personally, for me, I always love finding projectors, and I think there should be some in here. So we're probably gonna head up and poke around and uh, see what's going on up there. Just came up the stairs a little bit to give you guys a better look at all of the seats. From what I was able to find, this place was able to hold about 1,200 people, or at least originally it was supposed to. 
So, this is kind of what we're working with now. Super creaky, definitely very sketchy floors. We have to be really careful up here, even more so than downstairs, because um, it's a long way down. So we made our way up even more, and this is the one projector that's kind of still hanging out here. Not a lot left, kind of to find the more scrapped side. That is really cool to see. Let me get a little closer, there's a lot of stuff all over the ground here. It's a peerless Magnark. I feel like I've seen this probably in other locations before. And um, yeah, there's some dates here from like the 30s, ish, dated the 20s. So definitely on the older side, I'm just dusting my fingers off. <laughs> it's really, really cool. Amazing to see. I'm gonna try and get over to the other side. There's a lot of lots of stuff all over the ground that I just don't wanna wipe out on you guys. But kind of all the inner workings. Lots of like gauges and needles and lots and ends that I can't really tell you what they do, but it's not something you're gonna come across every single day, especially one of these older models. You're gonna see more modern versions that come out now in newer places, so these things are really unique. Okay guys, that's pretty much it for this place. So much to see, so much to uncover. A lot of historical context, especially with that theater, the bowling alley, even that too, was just really amazing, the amount of stuff to see, and the design, everything. I just really love this place. But with that being said, we are gonna head on out of here. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and send me some love. We always appreciate it. And of course, we're gonna catch you in the next one. Thanks.